In video number 7, I showed how to build a Nixie tube thermohygrometer with a Raspberry Pi. As I mentioned, a Raspberry Pi is a bit overkill for the application, so I replaced the Raspberry Pi with Arduino Nano. Let's open the box and have a look. As you see, I only replaced the Raspberry Pi Zero with an Arduino Nano. That's it. The Arduino Nano is maybe not as powerful as the Pi, but the performance of the Nixie tube thermohygrometer improved a lot. Much faster startup, lower power consumption and no worries about the operating system getting corrupted by powering on and off. The main challenge was to rewrite the Python software to C++. In this application the timing and sequence is very important. Any minor timing glitch is visible on the tubes. Let's have a look at the schematic. The schematic is basically the same as the Raspberry Pi based version from video 7. The NE555 based high voltage power supply is described in video 6. I will include links to these videos in my comments. Also links to the schematics and the C code. As mentioned before, please be careful with high voltages. This circuit can produce over 200 volt DC. So please never leave the circuit operating openly when you leave. Here you see the stove voltage stabilizer circuit. It's a 9 to 5 volt circuit built with an LM3117. For the Arduino it's also okay to use 12 volt because the Arduino consumes much less power than the Raspberry Pi. The clock signal for the numbers comes from the Arduino D10 pin. If for instance the temperature is 27 degrees, the Arduino D10 pin will provide 27 clock pulses making U1 and U2 count to 27 and display this number on the two number tubes. U3 gets a clock signal from Arduino D12 and is addressing the IN19 units tube. Then there is pin D11 which is connected to the 1417 IC's reset pin. So with D11 you can reset all the 1417's all at once to zero. The Nixie tubes all have a 20k ohm current limiting resistor which results in about 2 milliamps of um, current through the tubes. Please remember 2.5 milliamps is the maximum current for these Nixie tubes. Then there's the DHT11 sensor. It's connected to 5 volt and to the Arduino D2 pin to get the data from the sensor. The Arduino IDE already has many libraries pre-installed. For this thermal hygrometer, we still need to add the DHT sensor library. There are several ways to add a library in the Arduino IDE. We will add the DHT sensor library via the library manager. For this go to Sketch, Include Library, Manage Libraries. Then wait for the libraries index to be loaded. And in the search box type Ada Fruit Unified Sensor and scroll down until you find the Adafruit Unified Sensor library and install the library. I don't need to install it because I already did that before. To verify that the library has been installed, check File, Examples and then go down to DHT sensor libraries and here you see some examples. You can use the examples to learn about using the sensors with the Arduino. This is the initialization part of the C++ software controlling the thermal hygrometer. We first include the DHT library from Adafruit. Then here you define which digital pin of the Arduino the DHT sensor is connected to. Here you define the DHT type, I use DHT11. You can also use a DHT22 which has a higher quality. So you just can, let's say, change here the definition of the DHT type by uncommenting or commenting it. Then here we initialize the DHT sensor with DHP pin which is 2 and DHT type which is 11. And now we go to setup. We start the uh, serial port so you can uh, monitor the temperature also on your PC via the serial monitor, but it's only needed for debugging. Then the IN14 number clock is digital pin number 5, the 4017 reset is digital pin number 7, 
and the symbol clock is digital pin number 6. Then we do a reset 1417, that's actually a function, and we start the sensor. This is the main loop of the program. We start with reading the humidity and the temperature and storing them in floating point variables humi and temp. Then if the reading goes wrong in some way, there's a function in the library for that, we'll do a serial print fail to read from DHT sensor. So you can read it with your PC, it's only for debugging. In most cases, the reading will be okay. Then in this part, we change the temperature and humidity floating points into integers because our tubes can only show integers. Then here you have a whole sequence of functions. We start with resetting the number. It's a soft reset. So if for instance the temperature was 27, it will count another 63 to go to 0, 0 again. Then we do a soft reset for the units tube. So percent is 3, so it will set the unit to 10 minus percent, which will soft reset the I19A to the first character in the tube, which is an M. It will only remain there for a very short time, so you will not see that. We do a reset 1417. In case these functions have some issue with synchronization, uh, you are sure then now that all the tubes are at zero. Then we set the unit to Celsius. So this function actually sets the IN19A tube to the fourth symbol in this unit's tube. And you will show Celsius on the IN19A. We do a display number temp int, which is the temperature. So we display the temperature on the IN14. So here, let's say, for instance, if it's 27 degrees, you get 27 cocktails clock pulses out of this function. I'll describe the functions later. Then we do a serial print showing temperature in C. So you can see the temperature also on your PC for debugging. Then we wait for eight seconds. So the degrees Celsius, the temperature will stay there for eight seconds. Then we go through the same loop for the humidity in percentage. So we set the units to 10 minus Celsius, which is a soft reset. It will reset it to M or zero for the I19 tube. Then we display percent, which is the third symbol in the tube. And then we go to the numbers. We display number the Humi int after we did a soft reset of the temp int. Then serial print showing the humidity on your PC for debugging. And also the humidity will be shown for eight seconds. So these are the functions that we called in the main loop. The first function is display number. It has one variable. So if you, for instance, call display number 27, it will count for 27 times. And for 27 times, make digital pin 5 high and low. So you get 27 clock pulses. The delays here can set the, quick, the speed of the rolling effect of your Nixie tubes. Then here is the function reset number. So reset number is a soft reset for the number tubes. So if you have, for instance, reset number 27 degrees, it will count for 100 minus 27 times, which is 63 times, making the number tubes exactly go back to 0, 0 if they were at 27 before. Also here again, you can play around with the delays uh, if you want to change the effect. Then there is the set unit function, which is basically the same. It will set the unit in the I19A tube. So also it has one variable and it basically does the same thing. But then for digital output 6, which is connected to the 1417, which is controlling the IN19A display. Then the last function, reset 1417, that one is very easy. It just makes a very short pulse on the reset input of all the 1417s, which is connected to digital pin 7. So now the Arduino IDE, and I connected the DHT sensor to the Arduino Nano. And I'm going to compile and upload the software. Uploading is done. If we now open the serial monitor, we can see the temperature appearing and every eight seconds you will see the temperature and the humidity displayed here. So the software is working, now we can build it into the thermal hygrometer. 
I made a close-up video of the tubes to show the end result. I hope you liked the video. If you have any questions, please leave a comment.